G'day guys, how's it going? This tutorial is part two of how to build chord progressions and in this tutorial we will be exploring how to create simple chord progressions that are used in all genres of Western music. Now when I say all genres of Western music I mean that all genres use these basic principles that I'm about to show you. Please bear in mind that genres such as jazz even though they still use these principles, jazz has rather complex progressions that I won't be covering in today's tutorial. So let's get into it. I've written the following chord progression which is here above me in the key of C in case you are not familiar with the Roman numeral system. We are going to start with a three chord chord progression using the first also known as the tonic which is a home chord, the fourth also known as the subdominant which is a moving chord and the fifth also known as the dominant chord which is a climax chord. This chord progression stretches over two bars and each chord lasts for half a bar or you might say two beats and it sounds like this. That's one there's four, there's five, and back to one. This chord progression is the most common chord progression and it basically starts with a relaxed tonic chord which builds tension when it changes to a moving subdominant chord and continues rising in tension when it changes to the climax dominant chord and finally resolves when returning to the relaxed tonic chord. And this is the basic principle of music which is building up tension and then resolving back to a relaxed state. So to put this in perspective of a song, let's imagine the lyrics happening something like this. We are sitting at home with our one chord and we're starting to get bored so we decide to go for a walk with our moving chord. During the walk we meet a bear which scares us and escalates our tension to climax and so we return home to our one chord. Any combination of the chords 1, 4 or 5 will work without fail and millions of songs have been written using only these three chords. However, let's have a look at a couple of rules to help you get started creating your own. I recommend writing a chord progression that lasts two bars in length and as you can see above me here, I have two blank bars already set out. I also recommend having the chord progression start or ending with the tonic home chord. Now it doesn't have to start and end with the tonic home chord, it could be one or the other. So I'll give you an example of that. And here is an example of our chord progression only starting with our home chord or tonic chord. Chords can either last two or four beats in length and in this progression here I have the tonic chord or the first chord lasting for two beats, the fourth chord lasting for two beats, however the fifth chord here is actually lasting a whole bar which is four beats. The last rule is do not let the same chord cross over the middle bar line like I've got here the fourth chord starting in the first bar and crossing over into the second bar. Now if you feel that you're going to be limited by using the 1, 4 and 5 you can also include 2, 3 and 6 which will act as substitution chords. In replace of the 1 chord you can use a 6 as it is also a home chord however it will sound sad because it is a minor chord while the one is a major chord and it sounds like this. There's one, there's four, there's five, and there's six. You can also substitute the fourth chord for the second chord as they are both moving chords, however the second chord is also a minor so in comparison the chord progression will sound a little darker and it sounds like this. 
there's one, there's two, there's five, and there's six. To increase the tension of the fifth chord, you can combine the fifth and the seventh chords together to create a dominant seventh chord. And as you can see, the G chord is made up of the alphabeticals G, B, and D. The seventh chord is made up of the alphabeticals B, D, and F. And when you combine those together, you actually get a G seventh chord, which is G, B, D, and F. F. This chord now creates what's called a tritone between the third and the flattened seventh note of the fifth chord, which wants to resolve back to the tonic chord. So the third here is the B, which wants to resolve to the C, and the flat seventh is the F, which wants to resolve to the E. So we have a dominant seventh chord resolving to a tonic chord and it sounds like this. Basically the fifth chord is now a dominant seventh and has a little bit more tension. You can also turn the third chord into a dominant seventh which now wants to resolve to the sixth chord and like the last chord progression has a little bit more tension going to the sixth chord. You can now create a chord progression such as the one above me, which is one, four, three, six, which now sounds pretty cool. There's one, there's four, there's three, and six. Now, if you find all of this a little bit too much, you can also use someone else's chord progression as a starting point. I like to use the Wikipedia page, list of songs containing one, five, six, four progression. Here they give you a whole lot of songs with the chord progression already written out. In case you wanna look it up, I'll leave a link in the comments. You could take one of these chord progressions and twist it until you find something you like. So what has been your experience with creating chord progressions and did you find this tutorial helpful? I'd love to hear from you so please leave your experience or questions in the comments and if you'd like to see more tutorials like this please hit the subscribe button and click on the bell so you're notified when the next one is released. Thanks guys and see you in the next tute. Bye!